And we're like, yo, I mean, the cop, I mean, we saw the guy, the guy had a mustache, he had a beard. I mean, so the whole I, face, I could yeah. see his face. Wow. Which is, all right. So we're in the parking lot and they didn't know, they're looking for us. They didn't know where we did. We just mm-hmm. ran, crossed the train, ran a little bit more, down an embankment, over a fence, and we're sitting in front of a car, just waiting, just to see what's going on. And we hear them screaming and yelling, and they're looking for us, they're looking for us, they're looking for us, mm. can't find us. We're just standing there, you know, just waiting. We decide to duck so they don't see us, and we're just listening to them. And, you know, like, wow, okay. You know, we got away. Well, we thought we got away. Killer Killer Podcast. Killer Killer Official <laughs> Culture TV Instagram UK Frontline Beatbox created And we need to talk about world music and street culture Killer Keller Podcast Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast Live and direct central London Or essential as you need to be It's another glorious day in the world of street culture Just getting it in, in all walks of life Across the world And uh, this episode is uh, no different First of all, big shout out to everybody sharing and caring Telling a friend, to tell another friend, to tell another Super important, especially in my life uh, And hold tight, everyone that's got the Keller Vision app Free download, iPhone, Android For all your street culture sports And then some How sponsors the mighty GK Nifty Heads Of a massive 100 thousand play to earn nfts to give away to the streets just hit the link in the description or go to gkniftyheads.com and get ready for hot awards summer 2024 we have a very special guest we're going transatlantic to new york oh hell yeah east coast represent uh to the home of it an accompaniment as a part of beyond the streets uh last year uh we managed to track him down follow him in and all of his guys has crashed one in the building how are we my brother <laughs> i'm very well thank you for that <laughs> we got there in the end man i mean Honestly, once the dust settled on beyond the streets uh, in in London, um, you know, you just uh, you never know what happens. You know, it becomes this massive spike of an event, and then the dust settles. And uh, yeah, I mean, that must yeah. have been quite a ride for you, right? It was interesting because um, um, this was what number three or number four um, mm-hmm. um, of the of the beyond the streets, and I thought this was the most cohesive out of all of them. Um, the one in LA was was. Um, was unifying the one in New York, um, you know, you had to sidestep um a lot of the um legal, you know, stuff. But the one in London was was I thought was the most cohesive, the most um dynamic out of all of them. Yeah, man. I I think I went to the Beyond the Street. I didn't go to the Beyond the Streets of LA, but I went to um the location. I think they had the Beastie Boys exhibition on at that time as well. Um I think it was all part of a, a kind of continuing... Oh, the exhibition, yeah, that, the one at, at, uh, at Roger's place, yeah. That's right, big up okay. Roger, yeah, right. exactly. And and it's a, it was a beautiful space, you know, uh, the, the yeah. exhibition for BC was great, so I had no doubt about it yeah. that when Beyond the Streets was going to be touring around, it was going to be one seismic uh, circus. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, he, he had the idea of, of um, opening up a space for a while, but it didn't happen until um, recent, you know, and when he opened it, um, in LA, I thought it was cool because now he has a center where he can actually spiral out of. And um, that show was nice. I mean, that was a nice show. I didn't see it, but I saw it online. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of nice to see how everything just, you know, comes together. So that's nice. Crash, how do you, how does that, how does that connect with you? Like, as somebody that has seen it from very, from the inception, let's call it the inception. You've seen right, Graf. Right localized but then over the period of time and how it morphs because I, I know i know you're very savvy when it comes to exhibition spaces and you know the more commercial end of of, of the culture right but, but but you saw it from the beginning morph into this yeah, massive thing and then next thing you're watching it via uh you know <laughs> via website on in la and all these other places in such a seismic way i mean that must really you know that must ring some bells for you yeah, it's, you know, you, you don't think about it at the time. Um, you know, when you're doing it, you're doing it, you know? Mm. Like with music, you know, you're just doing it. You don't, you don't think about um, the repercussions, I guess mm. you could say, mm. um, down the road. You're just doing it. And um, at the time that, you know, like I was painting on the subways, um, I was always, you know, I was always painting on campus as a kid. Mm. So I'm um, doing this stuff on the subways. Um in the back of my mind, there were just a few of us that felt the same way that there was a lot going on and um, 
there was a, a uniqueness to it, but there, there was also like a, a, a power. I can't explain it. Mm. You had to be there, you know, but there was there was something more to it than just what we were doing. Um, we were talking in a, in a way that was different. Um, we were painting in a way that was different. Um, the way we were walking, you know, it was different. And as the years progressed, it grew into this thing. And, um, you know, where it is today is, is, is way beyond anything, you know, that any of us could ever imagine. Mm, so I mean, it's, it's bonkers and, you know, transferring yeah, yeah. globally, right? That's a good way of saying it. It was bonkers. You know, you know, you got three or four kids. We go out, we steal the spray paint. We decide to paint on a subway train and that's that. But mm. it was more than that. You know, um, what we were doing was, was laying down a foundation that, you know, 50 something years later, um, has catapulted to where, you know, you have heavy um, um, designers, you know, borrowing, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, what, what we've done and what we're doing to, you know, to, to bring it even forward, more forward. Yeah. You know, it's, 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 it's phenomenal. I, you know, you, you can't put your finger on it. It's just, it's just phenomenal. And then when you see what's going on in the world at the moment, you know, taking out, you know, high-rise apartment blocks and yeah, you know. that's dude, that's that's just you know, my hands, my my hats off to them. Mm. Uh, my hands are like you know, like concert, uh, It's just crazy. You know, it's, it's you know, yeah, it's you know, it's it's um, you know, graphics is, is uh, uh uh, I've oh, I've said it a thousand times. Is a, a, a youth art, you know. It's it's a, a movement that that the youth embrace because of um, the um, the notoriety of it, mm. the um, the danger that comes with it. Because damn, you know, we painted on subway trains that were on. So mm. at any given point, uh, any of us could have just been shocked to death, you know, or we could have been run over by a subway train like the poor kids last year from mm. France, you know, in New mm. York. So you know that that comes with it. Whether that's um, an attraction to people, I'm not sure. But you know, we didn't think you know anything of it. Just painting was that was that an attraction for you? Because obviously, um, for its time, that's a, you, there's a hefty price to pay for for your own. Yeah, man. I mean, you, you don't think you know when you're 15, 14, you know, 16, that age. You know, death is not something that you even anticipate. Mm. Whereas now, in our 60s, you know, you're like. You gotta be careful walking down the street because someone can just sideswipe you on a bike and you know take you out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you know? right. So, so you don't think about those those elements, um, but at the time you don't think about it. You're just doing it. You know, mm. um, you have two hours going to a train tunnel. You paint it. You're out, and that's it. Mm. Mm. And like you say, the impression that it left on even marketeers and designers, yeah. you know, illustrate illustrators and such, you know that. You, yeah, 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 yeah. You can't really quantify the influence, can you? No, I mean, you don't really think about the the influence because um, you're, you're in the middle of developing it. Mm-hmm. You know, like, you know, whatever we were doing, we're doing it. And it was um, step by step as you're doing it. You don't, you know, like, well, if we do this tomorrow, the Met might decide. No, that's, you know, we, we got two hours. We got the paint. Let's do this. And then the next week, what we're we gonna do? We gotta, you know, we gotta step it up a notch. Yeah, and yeah. then um, and then you know, with within friends, like let's say like we're like with Donnie White, like you know, what we'll um now remember there was no texting and all that. So we would like um call each other or even mess with someone, like, yo, we're gonna do this, all right, we're gonna do this in Brooklyn, we're gonna do this in the Bronx. So, you know, so we were able to CIA was able to like do things from both both points. And converge. So, you know, so that that's always going on. Um, you're meeting with like much 77, like, yo, we're gonna do this. All right, on the four train, oh yeah, we're you know, so you know, it was very grassroots, it was very um at the time, on the time, you know. Um now, you know, like you do something, um, and in 24 hours, someone um in Tokyo sees it. Yeah. Post a comment, yeah, and then yeah. someone else in, in, in Bombay sees. You know what I'm saying? It's it's so huge. And at the time, man, it was just 
you know, I saw it right away. Bro, just you running off those names in just one sentence just absolutely blew my mind. You're of the generation that kind of interconnects old school with, yeah. you know, older school with um, 80s, 90s, and you're still in the game now. That, it blows my mind that you're, you're seeing things in real time. For instance, this is what I'm coming to. It's like with all the, um, the obstacles that it was to communicate with people, that there were clearly moments of, you know, mission impossible. And while, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> while, while you've got technology on your side now, you're being watched ever more. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so the, yeah. this kind of crazy imbalance of, it's a weird yeah right yeah. I mean you know you don't you don't really think about that um, um, and the reason why I say that because you know there's cameras everywhere now and kids will go off and do tags and keep going you know do you think it's lab you, you rats do you think that's, to it. bro do you think that's lab rats in a way the, the fact that the, the, the scale <laughs> of graph is so much more you know because we're being watched so fuck it let's so, just go you know, let's just yeah. do it well that's well you gotta do it it's not gonna get done you know, mm. so um um you know you just do it at and um you know there's there's lots of ways of getting around it. You know you can have friends you know dress up as as subway workers you know and look mm. out for you and they could be on the stations making me the sweeping and you're painting and like yo and then you know you keep sweeping like yeah you know we don't we don't see anything so there's a lot of ways you know there's more theatrics involved but at the time you know you, you just did it. Amazing. Let's get into the time when you did it. Let's go and still do it, but let's go back to let's go back to the early days. Give us a young crash. Give us what you know. Where where do you where were you raised? Son? Born and raised in the South Bronx. Um, my parents were uh, Puerto Rican descent. Um, you know, it. I grew up in the era um, um, where there was a lot of. It started well. I grew up. I was born in sixty one. So mm-hmm. um, coming off of the fifties, there was that that innocence, you know, um, in the very beginning, but came, you know, came 1966 to 68, um, activism became huge, you know, you had the Young Lords Party, you had um, the Black Panther Party, you know, you had all these people um, being very vocal about what was going on in the world, Mm -hmm. you know, you had Vietnam, and and I have an older brother that um, served in Vietnam and came back, totally changed, it really um, messed them up. Really? So, um, uh. yeah, yeah. So, so that was happening. Um, and then came the seventies. Um, you, you, you went from being very active to, um, and then going to proactivity and then, um, it, it changed a lot because in this, in the late sixties, you had what was going on in the streets, but then from there it moved into like the street gangs, mm-hmm. um, which, which became a family thing because a lot of kids, came from broken families, so the gang sort of like stepped in and became surrogates mm. to a lot of kids. But then like 75, 76, um, a lot of the gang members um, were getting popped, at, you know, left and right by the police. Mm. Um, then they decided, well, we got to make money. And they realized um, music was a, a great way of doing it. So um, came 76, 77, you had a lot of early DJs that mm-hmm. were doing stuff in the streets and also in the clubs, you know, and, and after our club, there were no discos that were, mm-hmm. that were, I mean, there were disco discos, but the, what we were listening to, there wasn't areas that, you know, you can go listen to it. So you had house parties, you had um, after our clubs that you go from one disco to an after hours club that worked illegally serving beer, but then you had music going on. So this, wow. this is where we were coming from, you know, we were coming mm-hmm. from that, um, that, and then um, when, um, when punk rock hit, 77, 76, 77, um, 78, that that became another issue for us that we adapted to because, again, the rebelliousness. Mm. You know, graph was heavy on rebellion. So mm-hmm. anything that that was against anything, we were into. You know, yeah, we, we yeah, gravitated yeah. to. And, and that's what's, you know, today too. You know, the kids, anything that will go against the grain, I'm with it. Yeah. You know, and then and now it's it's even more fragmented. You know, um, back then you had three or four things happening. Everybody got to it. Now there's fifty things happening, and and there's it's impossible to relate to some of it. So you you become 
even more polarized and go into like this one or two thing and stay there. You know? Yeah, it's funny you say that because when I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but from an outside looking in point of view, New York was a scene itself. So punk, yes, and hip hop, yes, uh, yes. And, you know what yes. I mean? it's all one and the yeah. same. It's the energy, right? But the and the but the thing was. It was the same whether you were um, in Yonkers, which is above the Bronx, yeah. down to the Bronx, down to Staten Island. It, it was all cohesive um, because it was less fragmented. Mm. Today, I'll give you an example. Um, okay, I'm uptown. Um, something's happening down the street where I live at. Um, someone's playing there. And then because of the internet, we find out that there's a jazz spot opening in Staten Island. And... Um, Let's say Wu Tang is playing there, so mm-hmm. then we'll find out about it. But then, like while we're there, like yo, something's happening in two days at this meat market district area in Manhattan. But you gotta go to this bar, and then the bar will let you, you know. So it's really super fragmented. Whereas, uh, let's say Cool Herc did something happening, and there was a flyer done by Phase Two. Everyone found out about it. Boom, and we were there. Phase two, man. Um, and that was word of yeah. mouth. There was no internet, you know? But then phone calls. There you, was you no kind of need a tourist board, about. right? You need a tourist board nowadays, yeah, right? Man. Yeah. It was, yeah. It was very, you know, like, boom. Wow. I mean, yeah, what man. a time to grow up. What a time to be <laughs> present in, in the culture for that time. I mean, that is... Yeah, man. And again, it was... You know, people people uh, identify with the culture, but remember, it was just what we were doing. You yeah. know, like a lot of us were into, um, I was heavy into boxing as a kid. So um, I'll give you an example, hoodies. Mm. Everybody wears a hoodie. Not back then. Hoodies were used there. Um, we, we, you know, we used to get up early, early morning and, and and run to do our road work before we get into the, into the ring. So the hoodies were protecting us from the cold. That's wow. all it was. Mm. It wasn't about like, yo... You, you rock this with, with, with Lees and with Adidas or straight up Pumas, you know, whatever. Mm. Now that, the look, our look was our look. We got up, this is what we wore. Um, um, you know, I'll give you an example. Mm. Um, Nikes. Nikes weren't, you know, th- th- that didn't exist. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, A yeah. lot of us wore Nikes because it was what we used in the boxing ring. You know, so you had, like, like you had the, um, the Cortez footwear. Mm. Those were based off of um, the 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 bootwear that we used to wear in the gym. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? Well, we wore on the street were, were Converse, um, um, Chuck Connors. We wore Pro Cads, Super Pro Cads. Pro Cads, yeah. Now, the, 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 the limousine for the feet at the time were Pumas. Mm-hmm. So when you had the Clydes coming out with the black leather with the with the, with the the blue, with the black suede, we were yeah. like, what the hell? And you couldn't get those <laughs> anywhere. You had to look so for good. them. Wow. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's some OG pre- Pre street fashion yeah. level, yeah. In town. And listen, and then I'll give you, I'll give you a look that people um, don't remember. But um, back then, there was a basketball player named Pete Maverick. Pete Maverick was this white kid with long, dark hair, but the the brother was smooth. I mean, he was like on point. But his his look was he would wear sneakers, but then his socks would droop down. Mm-hmm. And and so what he would do was he would pull the elastics off. So when he's playing, they would droop down. But they, it was a look, so we adapted to it where we we would buy these um these uh wool um socks and take the elastics off, and then we would we would cuff them over the top of the shoe, so they would look like you know they were hanging over the shoe, and then you had on uh, you know whatever bell bottoms, whatever pants you were wearing, yeah, yeah, and then they sat right above the socks, so you had this look, you know, God, and, that's and that good. was a great look that we had, yeah, yo, like invention. You know, creating yeah, yeah. your well, own that's, You know, again, we came from nothing, so mm. we took and we made something. I think that's the thing with Graf that really strikes uh, the, the 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 rebellious chord in kids is that, you know, is it? I've said it before on podcasts, but the cheap to enter um, aspect of it, combined with you know the petty thieving and the you know the going yeah. out and actually doing it, but but having a having a uh, underpinning ethos of of style and you know it just edge ranks it even higher you know yeah yeah, yeah. make make something I mean, out of we, nothing we had nothing was. yeah Let, let's start with that we had nothing so what we did was um we stole the spray paint and then um um we um the guys that went before us they realized that there was a way of spraying wider so so it takes less time mm-hmm. so um we we learned from them 
uh, about fat caps. And there were only two or three fat caps. And you had to go to the supermarket and get um, and, and look at the um, 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 spray starch. Mm-hmm. And the caps that were there, those were the ones we used. And they used to spray really wider. But then there was another one um, where um, Jafon was a, a company that you used to clean your stoves with, the inside mm-hmm. of the stove. And their fat caps were, like, amazing. And they must have been so blah, blah, blah. those. Yeah. Yes. So those were like, you know, like, boom, like a foot long, you know? Wow. Uh, so you took that and you, you know, with the spray paint. And and by the way, there were only three com- three or four companies at the time. There was Krylon, rust Red Devil, and either uh, Martin Paints or the Floor Paints, you know, whichever was at the time. Mm-hmm. And each brand only had maybe like 20 colors. Wow. So, for example, Jeez. if I wanted to do an all light blue paint, you know, a uh, uh, fill-in, Krylon had baby blue, which is light blue. But then, Rust well, Oleum had a, 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 a baby blue that was maybe two shades darker. So, you could blend those two, but you had to get Rust Oleum and the Krylon to blend them. You know what I'm saying? And then, mm. the best outline cans mm. were um, um, Red Devil. They've never dripped. So, if you were to be able to steal... Um, um, but Red Devil spray paint, then mm-hmm. you were like your 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 elite because they never dripped, and and they also and also those cans when you outline and you finish a piece, you took it home because you didn't want to lose that can that was valuable. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah so, <laughs> so again, you know, so we we took from you know we took and uh, we made something out of nothing, but and then and then style. Then you had to figure out. Uh, I want to do something, but you know it's got to be noticeable because that's what style is mm. to be noticed. You know, mm-hmm. and then um, um, once you have a style down and you get colors that are really hard to find, like like um, hot raspberry or icy grape. You know, there were colors jungle green. There were colors that were really hard to find, but they were really bright. So when you do something with a little bit of style and then these colors, now now you're like two steps ahead of anybody else. Now you're like totally super rock star. <laughs> so, um, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but, there was, it, but that's really what set you... Yeah. Set writers apart, right? Who were, yeah. um, who were the, uh, who were the people in your mind that kind of pioneered certain, like you mentioned the fat caps, thin caps, and, you know, a couple of right. guys that, that, that actually made the, the letters bigger. Who, 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 were, who were the pioneers of that for you? Oh man! Um, here we go. Oh, now here comes here comes that question. No, there's, there's a bunch of <laughs> bunch of writers. Uh, okay, uh, I'll start with like the early writers that I remember from the early seventies. Uh, Phase two, Riff nice. Riff one seventy, mm-hmm. um, Colo one, who was uh, 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 basically on the like you know they had the different train lines. So on six line, Colo Puma Puma one hundred seven. Mm-hmm. Um, um, oh my goodness! Uh, Part Part's been doing it forever. Part. Uh, mm-hmm. That's what he's he's still painting actively. I mean, he's he's amazing. You know, he's yeah, yeah, yeah. And he and he goes back to seventy three. Wasp was a bad bad man writer, wasn't he? Wasp. Wasp, Wasp one. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Wasp. Um, I met him later on, but I I saw it, like, what stuff he was doing in seventy four and seventy five, mm-hmm. and he was writing with this guy named Schick. Schick. Um. Um. Later on, became a member of uh, Me Machine. Me Machine was one of the first rap um, um, recording artists who made it big, who actually had a hit record on the radio wow. in 81, 80, 81, 82. So he was a member of that group. So, But also, wait, but then you got to back up. And then you had, um, uh, oh gosh, uh, Peso. Peso was a style writer from the early 70s. And he was a member of um, um, Cold Crush. Wow. Was he really? No, they yeah, have something. Look him wow. up. Peso won. He was a member, a member of Cold Crush. Wow. Um, awesome. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. So, you know, that 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 whole world um um meshed. You know, you had guys that were writing, um, that were that were um that were rappers. Um phase two, phase two did music with Ram, um uh, with, uh, with Ram yes, uh, phase right. two, he 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 did music and he was one of the most influential writers. In the very early seventies, he's he um, sort of invented um, the bubble letters, you know. The, yeah. the very yeah, the, that was his thing. But then, like the the later stuff, the style stuff that you couldn't even read it was insane. Yeah. Well, uh, I have so, uh, I have style writing from the underground book here as part. Of oh my, yeah, 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 yeah. Up there, you see. Yep. I'm a huge fan of Phase Two. It, you know, the, the, the yeah, man, man created flyers, and you know he pioneered so Everything. much. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, and uh, I knew his brother really well. Well, I, I, the way I met him was um, uh, I'm a couple of years younger than he was. And I was on a basketball team and he came in and became our coach. No, I had no, no idea. No. People kept on calling him FaZe. I, you know, we called him um, 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 Coach Lonnie, you know. But and then I found out, like, asking, like, yo, why you guys keep calling him FaZe too? Then they told me, like, wait a minute. And then I knew him as a DJ before I knew him as a writer. Wow. So it was just like weird, yeah, yeah. That must have been such a well it's a, it's identification a like, crisis. Man, like, like, if you're... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> such a trip, man. That's a, yeah. And then, and then you got some other writers, um, uh, mid seventies, like Padre, Padre Two, who was phenomenal, phenomenal writer. Um, uh, solely, so, so, like under, um, under, um, you know, like recognized. Mm. Uh, and then you had Tracy One Sixty Eight. Um, oh, big up Tracy. I, I knew Tracy forever. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's a it's a big scene, but it's actually like most cities, you condense it down, and yes, it's actually a lot more smaller than you actually know. Yeah, right? man. I mean, let's let's say um, between let's say between seventy five and nineteen eighty, mm -hmm. let's say there were ten thousand writers. Let's just say, okay. but out of out of ten thousand, maybe. A hundred yeah. were consistent. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. th th that consistency. I mean, every every writer, I mean, the the shelf life is like three years. You know, some of us stretch a little more, but, um, you know, what happens is you start when you're 13, you start when you're 16, because at 16, mm. you you, rec you realize there's a thing called girls. <laughs> yeah. Now you come to think about then it. That, you you just like the girls. the imagination, right? <laughs> and then you like the girls, and then you realize you need money to hang out with the girls. So then you start working to make money to, you know, be with the girls. Yeah. And then, you know, you, you know, it, it's one of those things. So, yeah. It, um, again, the youth sport. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Another one. Um, give us some stories, Crash. Give us some crazy hair-raising moments um, of, uh, of your teens and uh, into okay, early 20s. Okay. A really, really, really good uh, scene. Uh, 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 there was a bunch of them, but... Um, Okay, so uh, 19, yeah, 1979. Yeah, 1979. Um, I used to paint with this guy named Kel, Kel139, mm -hmm. um, along with days. But uh, this one particular time, uh, Kel calls me like, yo, um, there's new trains being laid up at this, at this layup. And a layup, you know, uh, people don't know, a layup is a place where the trains get laid up for a couple of hours in between, like, the rush hour. So um, you leave yes. them there. Um, and then they pull them back out. So it was two days after Christmas. Um, I remember this <laughs> very well. There was no school. Mm -hmm. So what happens is the transit authority, they already know that when there's no school, there's more activity on the subway trains. Uh, okay. okay. All right. right. So 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 he calls me like, yo, there's some trains being laid up. Like, All right, cool. So he comes over to my house and it was it was me, him, his brother, and his other kid. Um, they used to write, and um, he, I asked him, "Yo, how cold is it?" He goes, "It's not that bad." All right, I didn't think anything of it, so I had a hoodie on mm -hmm. and I had a, a, a thermal jacket. Well, I I didn't realize that these guys were wearing were wearing like down jackets and these, you know, so they were like both up. So I go like, "Oh, yo, yeah. it's freezing out here." Anyway, we go to the layup, and the brand new subway trains, brand new shiny subway trains. Oh. We're like, yo, all right, this is cool. So. Um, we go to layup. We we get off the train. We walk in. You know, we walk out to the to the, to the trains. Out in, it was called Baychester. This area in the Bronx called Baychester, mm -hmm. and the trains are sticking out, shiny, cold as hell. Mm -hmm. We climb into the train. We had the keys to get into the trains. Don't ask me how, but we did. So we open the doors. <laughs> we get inside. The train, trains are nice and warm. We lay out the train. You know, the paint. All right. We open up one of the emergency doors and we climb out and look at the train. Okay, well let's let's start painting. We start painting. It's about ten in the morning. Well, hold on, right? So, so, oh, this is defying all rules. First of all, so you were checking yes. out your paint, laying them up inside the train, inside the train because it's cold. So when you put them inside the train, they stay warm, so they don't freeze Amazing. up. Okay, they, so they carry freeze on. up. <laughs> uh, so now the other way to keep them warm is you put them on the armpits as you're painting. They mm -hmm. stay warm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So all right, so we have the trains inside. I mean, the paint inside. We have one of the doors open, so that we can come in and out with the paint. 
sunny, sunny, bright, bright, frigging cold day, and we start painting. And then Cal tells me, yo, stop, stop. I'm like, what's up? He goes, I hear something. I said, all right. So he and his brother go up ahead, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm still painting, mm-hmm. you know. And then he goes, stop, stop. I said, okay. We crouch down. I don't see anything. So we, we go to the other side of the train. So, all right. So uh, there's three lanes. Mm. Uh, one lane, the trains are going downtown, the layup where we're painting, and the train going uptown. Right. So every time you hear a train coming, you have to duck underneath the train. It rolls out, and then you come back and paint. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, in yeah, this particular you. instance, we realize that there's no trains running. So he hears something. He goes, and he goes underneath the train, doesn't see anything. So we just had to climb up on the train and open the windows and look out so we get a better view. Mm-hmm. And there's a train pulling up with all police officers. Oh, my. No. All right. So we don't panic. We're like, okay, stop. Right, what are we going to do? We decide, let's, let's walk gently toward the front of the train. So what they do is when they lay out the trains, mm-hmm. every train is like nine cars. Right. So they just have to put like three sets of trains on a layup. So there's about 30, 30, 30, 35 yeah. train cars you know, lined up. So we're, right. we're walking in between each one, you know, from car to car. So we're going very gently so they don't hit the doors. Oh right. So as we're walking, we're passing the train with the police. We're just walking, you know, falling down, open the door. And then we decide to, you know, like, okay, let's run now. You know, we yeah. pass the train. So when we get up to the door, there's a cop facing us. No. Like, Yo! We turn around, we run, and we hear him screaming, come back. We're running, running, running. We jump off the train, and we basically just jump off, and the train's coming very slowly with the cops. We, we run in front of it, go down a hill, and we, and we jump over a fence, and we're in a parking lot with a bunch of uh, cars that are just sitting there. Yeah, yeah. And we're like, yo. I mean, the cop, I mean, we saw the guy. The guy had a mustache. He had a beard. I mean, so the whole I, thing, I can yeah. see his face. Wow. Which is, all right. So we're in the parking lot, and they didn't know, they're looking for us. They didn't know where we did. We just mm-hmm. ran, crossed the train, ran a little bit more, got an embankment over a fence, and we're sitting in front of a car, just waiting, just to see what's going on. And we hear them screaming and yelling, and they're looking for us, they're looking for us, they're looking for us, mm-hmm. can't find us. We're just standing there, you know, just waiting. We decide to duck so they don't see us, and we're just listening to them. And, you know, like, wow, okay. You know, we got away. Well, we thought we got away. Oh, so no. Everything's cool. So Kel decides, I, I'm going to go back and get the paint. Like, no, no, leave the paint there. Well, yeah. you know, he goes, no, no, no. We got too much paint there. Like, all right. So he had this one kid decide to go back and get the paint. I stayed with his brother, Mayor, and we're in the parking lot. And we're just, okay, you know, we'll wait for you right here. Yeah. All of a sudden, I hear, pow, pow. Uh, all this commotion like what's going on here comes Kel running and, and the, the kid that was with him they grabbed him Kel just left the paint like let's go let's go let's go uh, alright so now we decide to run um, through the parking lot and then into a, into a, a park that's, that's adjacent to the parking lot and here comes the police the cars like keep going keep going Whoa. and then we stop to hear them and then you could hear the, the radios like, you know, we're looking for them. We can't find them. And we're just like, cool. The car pulls out. We keep running. We ran maybe like a mile, a mile and a half. We, we, then we, we, we enter this area named Co-op City. Co-op City is like this, this really well-known, um, um, at the time, it was a very um, ahead of its time housing uh, unit. Yeah. Uh, it was all co-op apartments and people, live, you know, whatever. Gotcha. And it's facing a highway. So we go to that area. And we climb over a fence. The fence grabs my sleeve and rips the sleeve off. So now I'm walking around with one sleeve. Uh. Okay. Freezing cold. We, we, we cross the highway and we're just walking and walking and walking. And we get on the subway train. And by the way, we can't get on the subway train because they called out ahead. So they're looking for us. Oh, no. So we jump over the, the turnstiles, get into the subway train. The train's not moving. It's a manhunt. I tell them, dude, we got to get out of here. So no. we get off the train. And we're just walking and walking and walking and walking and walking. We leave that whole area of the Bronx. We got on a, on a bus. The bus takes us to 180th Street. We jump on the train there, and we're safe. We get home. All we thought we did. Oh, Turns no. out the kid that got arrested was an informant. 
That's what? how they knew we were there. Yeah. Yo. Yeah. Now so, that is messed up. Wait, so, so, all right, the next day. Oh, by the way, so we, we were all running through these, you know, thorn bushes. So we all got cut up. Yeah, you know, yeah. we're all like, you know, we get home. I'm putting alcohol in my face. I'm, you know, frozen stiff. Uh, I threw out my jacket. It was just, it was a mess. So the next day, Kel goes to school and the police go and arrest him because the kid dropped, he went to his school. The kid dropped oh, a dime on him. No. He got arrested. So now they're looking for me, but they didn't know where I, you know, they didn't know where I was because the kid didn't come to my house. He met me somewhere else. Dude, where that's we're paint. crazy. So you know what? Yeah. So it, it started off very early. I didn't get home until maybe eight o'clock that night. Yeah. Cause we, we couldn't get home. You know, we couldn't get on the subway trains. Yeah, yeah. Finally, you know, we, we were safe. We got home. And the next day, Kel gets arrested. He calls my dude. Don't go to you know, don't go to school for a couple of days just in case. So I didn't go to school for a couple of days. Really? So yeah. you never got caught, obviously. That's... I didn't get caught. I didn't get caught there, no. Oh man. I mean you right, so that's look... that's that's a good one. Yeah. yeah, that's a crazy one. That you I mean and you're, just pluck, yeah. you're just plucking out from the cause you must have tons of stories tons, like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Does it can I can I ask you, does does it do you rattle? Do you rattle with the? Uh, you, you know when near misses, near deaths, <laughs> near things, and you, you know, does your conscience suddenly, you know, as you're older and you're a bit, you know what, that could have gone really wrong. No, no, no. I mean, it, you know, I, I did it. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough to have done it. Mm. Um. I don't think I don't go. I don't think back and like, man, I should never have done that. No, no, never. That yeah. never entered my mind. We, Why is that? We, no, we had a great time. Why is I that? Mean, because... You know, let's let's say let's say out of five years, you have eight moments. Mm. You know, yeah. but then you have the the rest of the five years that you had a great time. Yeah, it's true, isn't it? It's like you can isolate those one things and have. Yeah, you man. Know. Yeah. Catch a stigma. I mean, on it. you isolate them because they, they, you know the I I I always say they're character builders. Because none of us panicked when that happened. Like, right, what we want to do? So, okay, let's do this. Why don't we just walk, you know, mm. as the train goes by, let's just walk this way. So they they won't, you know, they're looking for us on the bottom. They're not looking for us on top. And then we just had to look up and nope, they were coming in. They're like, oh. So <laughs> that's when we're like, let's run. And we just dipped and, you know, we just ran. And, and yeah, yeah. It's mad. It's like creative extracurricular activity for its time. Like there literally was... There was no internet. There was no nothing. I mean, I'm not certainly no. obvious here, but no. even TV, you know, there were, yeah, you know, you, you, there wasn't a lot of variety in the Listen, world, right? There was no cable TV. That didn't no, exactly, exist. yeah. You know, I mean, when, when, you, talk, when you think about that, like, I, like um, I'll give you, I, I, I equate everything with music. Uh, let's say 1975. Um, what was big in 1975 was salsa music, mm -hmm. like Fania All Stars. So you had people like Ruben Blades and all these people playing. Um, that was huge. Disco was just, you know, it it was there, but you know, but then you also had um um I was big um on jazz. I was huge with jazz. So you only have five or six segments of music. Mm. That was it. You know, it, mm. you know, there was you you like you go somewhere and you know what you're gonna get. Yeah. Nowadays, um, let's just say um, you know, like like yesterday was an example. Um, you know, they had the Super Bowl, so mm. so um, Usher performed, but there was such a mixture of things going on there. You know, that couldn't have happened in '75. Yeah, you're right, man. That's so true. You know, mm. it, 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 it you know no, it it took a, a group like I say, uh, uh, Fishbone to some, you know, to like you know, what I'm saying yeah. Fishbone was what so where they played everything, they mixed it together, and, and you know, boom. That's so cool, and and. You know, like you mentioned the the DJs of the time, and I'm a you know I'll throw out Ground Wizard, Theodore, Cool Herc, Flash, and all the kind of the the, the, the other old school cats. I'm sure there were a lot more underground um, progressive oh, DJs yeah, around. Well, as well, I mean, uh, 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 Little Louis Vega was this DJ who played up all these clubs, um, and he got you know now is when he's getting his flowers. But back then, you know, we're talking about playing after hours. You had guys that were playing after hours clubs, um, and I mean Flash. Was in school at that time. He was mm. a DJ. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? All right. Kaz, Grandmaster Kaz, he was writing lyrics. So he was still going to school. Mm -hmm. Seventy-five. Wow. So we're talking early, early 
Lose we're talking early, yeah. Yeah. We're talking early. Now, now let's go back to 78. Um, 78 was when things were, yeah. I mean, you could go, you could go to um, a basketball court in the summertime and and uh, DJ AJ was playing, and you had Melly Mel, not Melly Mel, um, um, yeah, 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 Melly Mel um on the microphone. You had um um, you know, like all these people out there, but it was all it also came with the element of danger. I mean, mm. Flash would DJ at a club. And um, um, you know, like if you were DJ, um, and you had nice turntables and all that, then you had the, uh, the element that wanted to rip them off. Mm, mm-hmm. So he would be like, so like, like most most crews at the time were big in number. So let's say, so let's say, uh, uh, Cold Crush were performing. You had, you had, um, um, um Kaz. You had Peso, you had all the guys there. Um, the, you know, so there are six of them all together. Who's going to mess with six guys? Yeah. You know, like, you know, you're going to have to pull a gun or something. Yeah. yeah. That type of thing. So, like, they would DJ, you know, at, at, at the street or whatever. And, and, you know, and then you had guys that from the projects that were with them. So they would hang out with them. So you had, you know, you had, but there was always something going on. I mean, I went to, a, I remember one time Flash was playing at a community center three blocks from where I lived and he's playing there and it was just packed. You couldn't get in there. So people outside, someone just has to pull a gun and shoot into the ceiling. The place was vacated. Just for, they did it just for fun. They, they just, they weren't trying to hit anybody. It was just, they're just like, just, let's just Back do up. this. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So I heard a pop. I'm like, I'm out. And I just ran. <laughs> you know, but yeah, That's my yeah. cue. I mean, but... that, that happened a lot. That happened a lot. Wow. Yeah, danger, danger, danger. That it, with anything, with anything that you know. I mean, I grew up um, in an area. I mean, this this is a factual. Um, I moved from um, the tenements where I grew up at in 1973 to the projects, hmm. which was, it was like five blocks away. But one, moving into the projects was was five steps up from the tenements. You know, so hmm. you, I moved into like brand new projects. But the projects that I grew up at, what what happens is. Projects are public housing. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Public yeah. housing. So if there's something going on and you're not paying the rent, they the in, in New York, they can't legally just toss you onto the street. They can't make you homeless. So it's like so they figure out a way like, yeah, of keeping you there. So um the housing, you know, the housing projects, there was always tons of elements of danger. And what they did was they figured out a way of eliminating a lot of the danger by taking the families that were like the worst possible families mm. and place them somewhere else. So the projects where I grew up at were brand new. So they were taking the worst families from all these other projects and putting them there. So I moved into that, into that. Wow. Yeah. So a lot of the guys that I grew up with were all former professional boxers or what, you know, these guys, like they were like, um, like there would be um, um, security at a club. Mm-hmm. So and these kids, and this is before guns were guns, you know. There were guns on the street, but not like, you know, like yeah. now. So like, yo, one guy would beat three guys up. You know, like, you go, go bam, and that was, that's how it ended. Wow. You know, so so I grew up with these cats, and we became really tight. We grew up together, whatever. But at the time, um, some of the um, the early graph writers mm. lived there. So I saw them. And that, you know, so as I'm, let's say, 12, and these guys are 15, you know, you always want to hang out with all the cats. Mm. And these guys were doing tags, and that's how I, I learned. I see. Wow. Yeah. My, my mind went at that space when you were talking about the projects and the, the kind of characters that, you know, the, the yeah, occupations. And, and then I... And I'll, then I'll, I give, wait, wait, I'll give you one example of one of the guys. One of the guys it. that grew up there, um, um, you know, Good with his hands, you know, good fighter, whatever. Um, and he became involved with um this is true. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say this as you know, if it wasn't true. Mm-hmm. The the mafia, the Italian mafia, always wow. use kids from the projects to do some of the dirty work. Like prospects. So they'll, they'll pull up, like prospects, they'll pull up, you know, yeah, they'll pull up in a in a in a in a in a caddy or whatever, like, yo, you guys wanna make some money? Like, sure, what you got? Yo, I'll give you guys a hundred dollars. All you gotta do is go over there and, and, and set a fire in that building. No problem. So give us the money right now. You know, 
I said, all right, wow. now you weren't going to rip off a mafia dude because they ran the number spots you know, yeah, all yeah. over the city. So, all right, so $100, you go to the job, you know, okay. In a month, they're like, yo, you guys want another job? That's sure. All right, we, you know, so there's, so this one kid in particular um, started working with some, you know, some cast from uptown, and he um, was hired to hit someone in a, in a, in a really well known disco downtown. Okay. All right. And he got the gun. So he went with his friend and they're dancing and they, and they, took, and they gave him the description. There's a guy there and there's a really well known disco. I'm not going to say the name, but well known disco. So my mm-hmm. boy pulls up, pops him in, in, the, in the kidney. The guy turns around like, oh. when he turns around, hits him in the head, he's out. Wow. Drops, drops the gun. You know, yeah. and, and, the, and, the, and everybody's screaming, drops the gun, boards a plane, moves to California. Wow. Because he's hot. Yeah. And what happens is, let's just say that the guy that he hired drops a dime. You know, and then, so the guy was gone. He, he moved to California for a long time. So this was, I want to say, 1978. Mm. Right around there. I saw the guy maybe five years ago. He moved back to New York. Stop it. Uh, how did and that after how did I that saw him, down? I never saw him again, and and no one knows what happened to him, so we don't know. Wow! But so you don't know what happened to the guy. Around. You don't no. know what happened you to the know. guy. No, like I, I'll give an example. We were we were at a barbecue, and he was there. We were talking, whatever. And someone decides to take pictures, and he's like, "Yo, yo, don't put that on on the internet." So maybe someone did, and you know, but he hasn't been seen since. Yeah. So a lot of that I grew up with. And and this this is what I'm saying is absolutely fact. I'm wow. not saying anything. It wasn't true. Um yeah. we're policing ourselves these days, aren't we? That's that's huh? the moral of that story. It's like yeah. cameras yeah. everywhere. We've all got cameras. Um, yeah, we're snitching. I mean Yeah, you know what? It's it's uh, a a friend of mine a friend of mine um said it said it best. It's the it's it's the life that we led, you know. Hmm. Is it worth risking your life? He always say, is it worth risking your life? And I always said it. I always said it. When you used to paint, is this worth me? Like, hell yeah, hell yeah, you know. Yeah. Oh, that was quite, that was kind of the uh the the the, the, the kind of yeah. the caption yeah, yeah. before doing yeah. anything. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Is it worth risking your life? Like, hell yeah. Yeah. There's something there's, some, there's a charm to that, isn't there? There's a real yeah. charm to that. Um, but it's 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 real, it's real, it's very real. Can you oh, maybe there isn't anything too deep about it, but with, with the crack epidemic. In New York. Okay, oh. so that's that started. Okay, so you know that movie, uh, New Jack City. Yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah. So it was, it was, it was dated like nineteen was it eighty six, eighty five yeah, or six. That's right. Crack was there in eighty one because really? crack, crack was free basing. They were free basing in the seventies. How did that impact Graf um, at the time? Because you know, was... oh man, well, a lot of kids got hooked. You know, really. Well, it, you know, I mean, Graf and and the, and the street went hand in hand. Yeah. Whatever happened on the street happened to Graf. Yeah, and vice versa. So what was happening, you know, yeah. Wow. So so mm. when it hit in 81, now also in 81, not only crack, but AIDS also hit. Yeah. 80, 1980, mm. 79, 80, right mm. around there. The first elements of, of, of AIDS was, you know, and, and most of it was happening in gay clubs. It's dangerous. But dangerous the thing time. is, yeah, my boys... Um, some of my boys used to hang out near gay clubs because when the guys come on, they're all high. They would rip them off. Mm-hmm. So, you know, so rip them off, take the drugs, whatever. Um, but, you know, yeah. And, right. and, and it, it's, it, the way it morphed from, from gay clubs to, um, you know, drug use, it happened very quickly because Shy147 died of AIDS, but he wasn't gay. Yeah, he used yeah, to yeah. share needles. That's right. Yeah. And this is this is 81, 82. Mm. So when I went to see him in the hospital and he had all these black and blues on, I'm like, dude, you know, what's going on? You know, let us know what's going on because if someone's attacking you like that, yo, we can take care of business. But we didn't know it was that sarcoma that's that comes sometimes with AIDS and he had black and blues. And we thought he was getting beat down at, at in the hospital or something. Like, yo, now we can take care of this. Let's go. Give us, oh. you know, like, no, no. Oh man. That is so such that a... so crack was right there. Mm. You know, crack was right there, and 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 you know, yeah, it was. You know, when when crack hit, man, um, a lot of kids that I knew who were dealing dealing um, dope, mm. they switched automatically because crack was making so much money. 
But then yeah. one of the guys stayed because you needed something to bring you down from the high. So so they were making money again with dope mm. because it would bring you off that high. Wow. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. This is, this is totally real. This is real. Dangerous, just complete and utter lawlessness is the streets, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Mad. But but you know what? In that law in that lawlessness, there was also um etiquette. You know, like that there were things that you didn't do. Yeah. You know, there were things that you didn't do. Like, I mean, growing up in the projects, regardless, yo, we always looked after everybody's parents. So let's say if hmm. someone's parents are, are shopping and someone tries to rip them off, yo. It's on. If we caught the guy, it, you know, retribution was swift. Wow. Yeah. Good moral so, high grounds there. Yeah, yeah. It, it was a weird thing. It was a weird um, um, moral thing that was happening. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It was very bizarre. Very bizarre. And of course, the no snitch rule. <laughs> Don't snitch. No snitching. Oh, no. Snitching you didn't do. If they found out you were snitching, dude. You know what? They would beat you, but then they would scar you. And you had to walk around with that scar. Wow, really? Oh. <gasps> yeah. Yeah, like, you know, like in the in the early 40s, 30s and 40s, they cut you on your face and that was the mark of the squealer. Really? They, would, they would knife you and they had to walk around with that scar. But, you know, it went beyond that. So, um, um, I mean, they would beat you, they, they would scar you. But then, like, you know, the worst thing was to put out a, 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 a rumor about you and nobody would want to mess with you. I mean, you walk by the street by yourself, mm -hmm. something happened, you know, you're, you're laying in the street, no one cared. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking crazy street codes. Dude, yeah, yeah. It was heavy. It was some heavy stuff, yeah. You don't want to be wrapped up in the wrong thing at the wrong time, do you? <laughs> well, you know what it is? You, <laughs> you don't think about it because you're there. It's like when I see when I see um, pictures of the South Bronx from like 1974 to about 1978, when you see all the burnt out buildings, the yeah. abandoned buildings, you don't think about it because you're living there. So you don't see it. You don't see it that way? No. No, you don't see it. Now when I look at pictures, like, man, I live there. Yeah. That must you be a head you, you don't, yeah. It's it's like my daughter's, you know, when I my daughter's in the 30s. So when I show them pictures of where I grew up, and they're like, How how did you make it out? Like, by the grace of God, because yeah. nothing else. I don't, I don't know, I don't, I can't see it. Yeah, I guess it's. You know, there, there's no, blessing. there's no in my in my in my life and in my world. There's no such thing as luck. Mm. Everything that there's, you know, there's a, a ways of I mean, there's a, whatever it is, is there. But it's choices it's, as know, well, isn't it, Crash? It's choices, you know. Your your choices, you, but remember, the choices are given to you. Yes, that's right. You make the wrong choice. That's not bad luck. That's the choice you made. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I feel that. Um. You're, you're a very spiritual person, aren't you? You practice a lot of spiritual yeah. stuff, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Are we able to talk about that? Because it's, you know, it's a yeah, very, yeah, yeah. you know, because you know, yeah. you're, you're into meditation, you're into yeah, yeah. All, all sorts of stuff like that. And uh, I, I guess that helps kind of create that uh, that balance that we're talking of in a way. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When did you get into it? Um, well, I grew up as a pastor's kid, but I didn't get into it until very later on in life mm. when um, I needed to like, you know, I, you know, you 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 get hooked on a lot of different things. I got hooked on work, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I would like do jobs, get up in the morning, come back at night, come, you know, that type of thing. I would have checks in the mail sent to me and I would like, okay, whatever, whatever. And it got to the point where um it just took its toll. And one day I'm driving and I like I hiccuped, but then I hiccuped and I saw all this blood come out of my mouth. Like, <gasps> whoa. I pulled over, like, what's going on? So I went home, I laid down, like something's wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so next yeah. day I called a friend of mine I went to the doctor at, at the beginning of an ulcer but then you know I wasn't sleeping you know I was just it just took its toll it just devastated me I'm like alright I need to like, make a couple of changes so yeah okay. um, I think there's a lot of people that can relate with that maybe not so much the yeah, hiccup, blood, hiccup blood thing but certainly with the uh, pressure I overworked do it, not even overworked yeah. enjoying the Enjoying pushing the th you, tolerance, that's, right? Right, and that you know what, and that stems from um um. With me, it stems from like watching my dad pass away. Right. Th this was an old man. Um, I you know, long story short, this was an old man. Like you know, he had nothing. He worked hard, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, and he worked hard, but you know, he he made enough that we were covered. Mm -hmm. You know, 
So um, in the hospital, he was, you know, he he wound up dying due to um, uh, a stroke, but it, it was an onset from diabetes. So every every other month he's in the hospital and they started amputating his toes, then his feet, up to oh. his up to his thighs. He lost his legs. But he never lost his smile. Oh, and he was always, you know, like, and I'm like, I see him and I'll see him like, I will talk to him like, look, you know what? To him, the mm. Bible was just a, a just a comfort. Like, yeah. okay, I don't think about it. But then after he passed away, in my mind, I wanted to be like him. So I started working 24 hours. You know, I had to make sure my kids are covered. I had to make sure everything was cool. And yeah. then it got to the point where I was self-driven to the point where I got sick. I did that to myself. That was my choice. Mm. You know? And then um, um, I went to the doctor and he said, look, I don't need you to, to go on some medication because you're not sleeping, whatever, whatever, whatever. I, unbeknownst to me, I was having anxiety attacks. I didn't know mm. this. Mm-hmm. All right, wow. so it got it got deeper, deeper to the point of medication. He goes, now you have you need to see a therapist because you need to, you know, to have this medication evaluated during time. Like, all right, whatever. And then this happened a week before, a month before September 11th. Oh wow. I get a phone call September 12th from my therapist. He can't see me anymore because his wife died in one of the buildings. I'm like, what? So now I'm in limbo, going on going through all this weird stuff, taking all this medication. Like, all right, so what am I gonna do? Yeah. So my sister, one of my sisters told me, look, I know this therapist. He's a cool guy. You can talk to him about anything. And all right, so I made an appointment, went to see him, and that was it. You know, like, he actually made me aware of, because a good therapist makes you aware that you're the issue, not everyone else. Mm -hmm. And you have to make those changes in your life. I'm like, all right, you know, and sure enough, man. Sure enough, that's, that's you know. incredible. So, so anyone that's going through stuff, listen, I, I, I mean, my thing was, you know, like God said to me, you know, to me, if, if you're into Buddhism, into Islam, whatever it is, if it centers you, mm-hmm. and and you become the person that you're supposed to be, then okay, you know, I'm not gonna tell you what's right and what's wrong. For me, God, that that was what centered me and to this day you know like if, if people come to town I tell you straight up like look I can't see you on Sunday because that's the time that I need to take for myself Yeah. and I go and you know I put my worship on and I'm at church and I you know I'm with my, my friends and all that but then at the end of the day I'm like yo come with me check it out and you know my, my pastor's a biker a former biker tattooed up and yeah. we hang out and, and you know we go get a beer and we t- and, but it's it's not Religion is more of a relationship type of thing. And, you know, and when you get there, then you understand. Yo, I'm kind of all about the biker pastor that's going to get a beer after Dude, the sermon. That sounds joke, dark. <laughs> yo, yo, and we, like, he's traveled with me, you know, um, we go to rock concerts, you know, we, you know, he's a person. What it is, is what, basically what you're doing is you're living your life in a different way and you learn to love people. And that's it, you know. Yeah. And you love yourself, ultimately. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's number one because without you, yeah. you can't you can't go out there and do what you gotta do. You 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 need to, you know, like um, uh, you know, as you get older, you realize I can't eat pizza anymore because it burns me. You know, I can't I can't eat anymore. Mm. So what do you do? So oh, I love fish. I love sushi. All mm. right, you know. So you start changing those things, and also like, hey, you know, I lost some weight. And my knees don't hurt as much. Okay, this is kind of cool. Yeah, you know, that, and then you feel good about yourself. Then, like, we're hanging out somewhere, and I see you going through a rough time. Like, yo, you know what? Why don't you stay with me a couple of days? You know, we'll drive somewhere. You know, we'll go fishing, whatever. And then, like, you know, then you, you tell me what's going on. I don't tell you. You tell me. Like, yeah, I'm having a hard time. Like, okay, so what do we want to do about it? Like, I don't know. Like, you'll know when the time is right. But I'm here, and we can talk whenever you want. And that's what life is. Yo, everyone needs a homie like Crash. That is... That's so. And you know what? We all have them. We just don't know it. Yeah, it's true. Until until you hit that wall. Yeah. And then someone that you don't know or that you you, you never really thought about, go check you out of the hospital. Like, what are you doing? Like, I heard you were not feeling good. Like, oh yeah. Look, I bought you a sandwich. I'm like, you know, so down. Like, you know, let's talk. Mm. And people that you never thought of are the ones that come through. Wow. Yeah. Of course, the l- least expected of people. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah man. Isn't that the way? Yeah. Do you, uh, so, uh, do you do you do a lot of physical sports, Crash? Is your uh, uh, oh man, you, yeah, 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 everything, 
Really? Well, everybody knows I'm a big Arsenal fan, so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh yeah, man. I mean, I was in London. Gonna lose views right now. All clicking on any joke. You Tottenham. Podcast. I know. I know. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But um, I mean, we love, we, we love, we love Tottenham too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were in London, and, and I saw that it was the Six Nation uh, tournament. I'm like, oh, cool. Yeah. So I love sports. I love sports. What I'm not really big on is golf. So mm, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that kind of loses me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I love sports, man. Any, any kind of sports, I'm, I'm with it. That's so cool, man. I see a lot of that. Master Ace cycling everywhere around New York. That, that, I oh, yeah, man. Him. He goes for Yeah, it. and now that, now that they've built these, all these bike paths all over the city, mm. you can go from one end to the other on, on bike path, yeah. What's New York saying right now at this point in time, you know, whether it's graph or, you know, more extracurricular um, activities, <laughs> is it good out there? Uh, yeah, you know, there's still stuff happening. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's funny you're saying that. Um, I, had, I, I was at a friend's house yesterday to watch the Super Bowl. And he's, the guy's asking me like, yo, so how's it feel like, you know, to be legitimate all these years? I'm like, what do you mean legitimate? Hmm. You know, graph is still illegal. Yeah. He looked yeah. at me and I'm like, dude, graffiti is still illegal all throughout the world. There's nothing illegal about it. Now, if I do a legal war, that's different, but but the act of graffiti is illegal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he looked at me like I was crazy. Yeah, people are graffiti so diluted. It's diluted now. It's like they think it's tolerated in every single scenario now, don't they? Oh no, you can still get arrested, man. Yeah, man. Listen, you come to New York. You come to New York with stickers and say, "Oh, I'm gonna put a sticker right here," and there's a camera to catch you. You're, you're you're busted. You're busted. Wow, really? That that tight? Yeah, man. Yeah, it's still illegal. It's very illegal here. Well, even slaps, even stickers. Yeah, man. Wow. Well, how, um, what'd you get? Do you get wait, fine? Uh, um, 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 uh, um, oh, gosh. The French kid uh, uh, that does the uh, uh, space alien. Yeah. He got busted a couple years ago in New York. Really? For putting up a sticker. So what did he get? Misdemeanor or something? What did he get? Um, well, he had to come back. Well, first of all, they took his passport. Oh, um, then he had to make an appearance. And then, you know, whether it's it was settled there or you have to come mm. back, I'm not sure. But yeah, yo, it's illegal. Graph yeah. is illegal. I mean, we we do murals, but that's because we get permission and yeah. we're part of a, whatever it is. But if I decide to, you know, if I'm doing a mural, like, okay, cool. And I go across the street, I'm going to do a throw up. Boom, I got arrested. See that that see that just doesn't fill me with much confidence because my friends in LA they're like next time we're in LA come and paint I'm just like bro I'm not gonna do that I don't think so it just it's illegal really, man. yeah it's illegal it's one it's thing for the locals do but I'm not jumping in and then having my passport taken right yeah 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 no they hold your passport because oh wait you're British hold up yeah hold yeah yeah passport. we yeah. got one here Larry oh man <laughs> and let me tell you something if if it's me and I get grabbed or they make oh they put me in the news they make an example of me. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. But I exactly. can't do that. <laughs> it's the worst fear, right? It's the yeah, worst fear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it, it, you know, it's totally legal. The, guy, the guy next to me goes, what? I'm like, dude, it's all, you know what? Yeah. If Let me tell you something. If you decide to DJ in the street, like, I'm going to play some music, mm. all right? And you, someone gives you an electric cord from a store and you plug in, you're getting busted because you don't have a permit. It's illegal. Yeah, I've heard about this too. New York's pretty... Illegal! It's New York's illegal. brutal at that, right? Because apparently yeah. you need a license yeah. for people to dance in the place. So as soon as you got... Yes. You may have music, you may have a license for the music, but as soon as you, as soon as they see people dancing, yeah. you need a license for that as well. Yeah, yeah, cabaret. It's a cabaret yeah. license. For for music, you need a, a, a sound license. Yeah. For me to paint, there is no license. I just have to get permission and get a piece of paper saying, I got permission. <laughs> It's crazy. It's nuts. Yeah. Yeah. Come back, CBGB's all is forgiven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, John Vavardos, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy, right. right? But yeah, people don't understand that. It's totally illegal. Wow. In the United States, it's totally illegal, man. Now, I could go to Japan um, because they, they, you know, like now, okay, the culture. So I could go to Japan. And, and, you know, let's say you, 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 all right, you're going to DJ here. Mm. I want to get them, to, you know, whatever. And I'm going to paint on the wall. They will not arrest you because they think that it's supposed to happen. Really? Okay. They don't know. Yeah, true. They don't know. They're like, okay. <laughs> so the police come like, yeah, we're DJing. And we're painting the mural. Like, oh, okay. And, you mm. know, people are enjoying. We're not hurting anybody. Yeah, but yeah, here? Yeah, 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 yeah. No. No. 
uh, right now, that's not, if I go down the street, I, I want to do a, a little, uh, let's do a memorial for someone that just passed away. Mm -hmm. It's illegal, man. I can't do it. I do it, and a cop comes, like, yo, what are you doing? Like, yeah, you know, I'm doing a mural for someone that just passed away. Uh, where's your permit? Like, I don't need a permit. Like, uh, come here. <laughs> when they say, come here, that's when you go. What about, like, people, like, notice and that, you know, or, um, you know, people that do the big walls, like, how do they get away with that? That's, like... That's permission. What, to climb down with the rope and do that? Oh, no, 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 no. That's, 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 that's crazy. That's... <laughs> That's well, crazy. Like, you guys pioneering that right buildings. now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those buildings in LA. None yeah. of that was legal. They came down with ropes and everything. <laughs> uh, <Yeah. laughs> Next level. Yeah, it's totally illegal. It's totally illegal. It's bl that blows your head, right? Yeah. yeah. None of it is legal. None of it is legal. What's the what's the what's the damage on getting caught? What do you reckon? What's the Oh well, now what they do is they arrest you. And they and they charge you with you know criminal mischief with um 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 uh, uh, there's three or four hits but then then they go after you money wise like okay you need to um pay restitution it's gonna cost ten thousand uh, ten thousand dollars what you gotta pay and if you're a kid they go after your parents wow yep <laughs> insane yeah yeah it's bug right but it's totally illegal man yeah. you guys you, America are a lot more yeah, heavy on the fines where that's concerned, but although it's, well, you know what? Because they think that hitting you in the in the wallet is going to be the best deterrent. Yeah. Well, back then, if that would have happened, yeah, we would have died. My parents would have beat the hell out of me. Like, and I got to pay hundred dollars. Where am I going to get the money? You know. Yeah. yeah, yeah Nowadays, yeah. a lot of kids they come from families that have money, mm. so they don't care. Nah, that's right. They, they got buy the spray paint. Yeah. They buy. They don't steal it. They buy the spray paint. Yeah. Do you think? Um, do you think um, the the actions that <laughs> I you guys... I baffled you with that one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, because now I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, well, why so high? Why so brazen? Why so aggressive with their fines and, you know, the p p punishment? Because it's... Well, right now, New York has gotten so bad. The yeah. grass situation is so, so bad yeah. that they're just like, we don't know what to do. So they, yeah. they hit you harder and they'll hit you harder. They'll hit you harder. Like, they're just going after you. That's crazy. Do you think? Do yeah. you think your guys' actions back in the day, you know, allowed allowed these tougher um, uh, penalties? Because you know, you guys went, you took it to the mountain. Your your generation yeah. took it right yeah. to the top, to the point yeah. where it imploded. Yeah. And then you've got new generations yeah. coming up saying, "Yeah, we'll have a, we'll have some of that." Yeah. Like, but they're not letting it because they know what you guys did. <laughs> Yeah, and listen, and, and the kids today are ultra aggressive. They're they're like they're crazy. Yeah, yeah. These kids are crazy. Yeah. And I'm like, I would not have climbed up a building and come down a rope. That would not have happened. I would have done that to get into someone's apartment to get the stereo, not to like paint my name. No. But that just goes back to you know like kind of what's that uh, free jumping? It's like free jumping, yeah. but for graph. Yeah. That's yeah. just 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 in like it's too much for my constitution. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it's 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 crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, like everyone right now, you know, is about was all about the the subway surface, you know, on the top of the train and all that. Yeah, I see that. We well, did yeah. that. We did that, but it wasn't too. You know, mm. no one cared. Yeah. So that means no, like, no, someone, no, used to that. so yeah, one okay. of the kids who died probably came mm. from a family that was well connected and. Mm. Man, times yeah. are changing. Yeah, man. Crash, it's been a pleasure having you. I could talk to you all, all day. Um, it's a pleasure <laughs> chatting with you, my brother. Honestly, honestly. Oh, thank you for having me on, man. Yeah. I've way, way beyond my expectations. I've really, really enjoyed our chat. And uh, yeah, next time in New York, apart from a Sunday, I'm definitely going to hit you up and, uh, you know, go grab a coffee or something, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, we hang out. We hang out. Thank you so much for joining us on the Killer Keller podcast, Crash One. Yo, thank you. Thank you for chasing me down and catching me. Yeah, it's good. We got you. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, I like in was out of fashion. Another fantastic, fun filled podcast journey we just had there, <laughs> courtesy of Crash One. Hold tight. Um, yeah, New York to London. Um, listen, Sharon is caring. Tell a friend to tell a friend, all right? Uh, crime don't pay, but neither do they. Uh, don't talk to anyone. <laughs> you yeah. stay lucky, people. Peace. Peace. Thank you so much, bro. That was amazing. Yeah, man.